You know, I enjoy Halloween for several reasons. First of all, I enjoy those kids. I really tickles me to see some of the kids that uh, come around that they do. Now, I don't enjoy the older ones. Now, some of you come to me in a costume and want me to give you a treat, and I'm going to give you a trick. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I, to me, it, it, it's just, just a thrill to be able to see these kids. And some of them can hardly talk, but come up and you go, Ikwi, Ikwi, and I get a big charge of them. I, Steve used to have a dog, a boxer, that I think Halloween was one of her favorite nights because she thought all those kids were coming around to see her. And she really loved kids. And, you didn't dare do anything to a child while she was around because I've seen her go after parents when the parents tried to discipline a child. And uh, I see Ruth back there shaking her head. So it, Halloween's, a, a, I think, a fun time. But yet there's some serious aspects of Halloween. I think if you look at the history of Halloween and how it involves demon worship, devil worship, how the Druids used to be able to steal a child and, how the jack-o'-lantern was placed on the uh, uh, stoop of the there when they had the child and then they offered that child up as a sacrifice to their false father. So it, it, there's a lot of history that is not pleasant. So I've always looked around Halloween time to preach a sermon on the idea of Satan, the great masquerade of Satan. I think of how Paul says he transforms himself into an angel of light and how deception is a part of his activity. And I, I, I've often thought to think about that, and I also want to think about some of the things that are going on in the world today as part of the great deception of Satan. However, this particular year, as I think about Halloween, I could not help but go back to my study of the Book of Acts in the things that I've been researching and think about the fifth chapter of the book of Acts. And if you happen to look at the scripture page that I gave out, almost every scripture I have in my mess, almost listed there is not from the book of Acts. To give you somewhat of a history of this, Jesus was crucified. And we assume that the year was around 30 AD and this was still that particular year because the church had not grown that much. He rose from the dead, and after that, uh, on, uh, 50 days after was the day of Pentecost, Acts, the second chapter. On the day of Pentecost, God sent the Holy Spirit upon the disciples. Tongues of fire were upon their head. They began to speak in tongues, and people began to hear what they were saying in their own language, and they were confused. How could this be? But these people were Galileans, and they were speaking, and we were able to hear them in our own tongue. Then Peter stood up and preached the first recorded of the gospel sermon. And as a result of what he said, there were 3,000 people, men, that were baptized that particular day. And according to Acts 2.38, they were baptized with the remission of sin that they might receive the gift of the Spirit. The rest of Acts 2 deals with the church and the early days of the church and it ends with the idea that God added to the church daily such as should be saved. The third chapter of the book of Acts deals with the idea of the men in the gate called, called beautiful being healed and the great assembly of people that were there in the temple and Peter again preached a sermon and 5,000. Now, whether there was 5,000 more that were baptized or the number of the disciples were increased to 5,000, I don't know. I've read both ways and I have seen arguments both ways and I they have not made up my mind. But as a result of what they were doing in the temple, of the, they were arrested. In the fourth chapter of the books of Acts, it tells about how they were told not to preach in the name of Jesus Christ. They were warned strictly. The King James Version says, did we not straightly command that you not preach in the name of Jesus? And in that particular chapter, Peter responded and said, is it not right to hearken unto God rather than hearken unto man? And they were let go to go back to their company after they were strictly warned not to be able to preach in the name of Jesus. 
The fifth chapter of the book of Acts begins with the idea of the uh, Ananias and Sapphira selling a piece of property and claiming that that was the full price and we gave part of it back to God. And because they were lying to the Holy Spirit that this is a part, they were struck dead, one, one and then the other, taken out and buried, and the church increased in great numbers. It's almost impossible to tell how much the church had increased, but it was still early, still young in the history of the church. And because of the increase that was there, they, they found out that the apostles, they were arrested again. It was at night and they were thrown into prison. And the angel of the Lord came and released them from the prison and told them to go back and preach the things that they were preaching. In the morning when the Sanhedrin or the council of the Jews called for them to be brought from prison, the guards came back and said, hey, they're gone. They're gone. Then the Sanhedrin heard that they were preaching down in the marketplace the things that they were told not to preach. So they went and got them. Now I'm going to pick up and read the scripture at that particular point. Acts the 5th chapter beginning with the 26th verse. And I want, I want you to listen carefully because in a few minutes we're going to go back and look at this as well as other verses of scripture. But we find that they went to captain with the officers and brought them without balance, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not straight, we were strictly, command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom you slew and hung on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And we are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, also the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that have been him. After this, they were wondering what to do, and Gamaliel stood up and offered a testimony for them. And the Bible tells us that they were beaten and let go, go back to their own company. There are five verses of Scripture that stand out to me, two of which are not in the passage that I read, but I refer to them, and three are in the passage. And I, I'd like for you to give serious thought to these five verses of Scripture, and as they apply to us in the 21st century. For as we think of our life today and the things that we experience in life, I think these are very pertinent. Somebody told me this morning, and I'm not going to say who because I don't want to embarrass fellas. <laughs> but she told me this morning this is not the same world in which we were raised in. And I have to agree. And I think these five verses of Scripture can be Scriptures that will help us as we deal with life, the Christian life, in a world that is changing, not for the good, but for the bad. Number one, I want you to look at the 19th verse. The disciples were in prison. It was that late at night, and the angel of the Lord came and released them. I want you to hear the message the angel of the Lord gave to them at that time. He said, the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Now, when I was doing my research and my study on this, that passage of scripture jumped out at me. And I want you to see exactly what the angel said. You go preach. And what were they to preach? 
all. Notice that word all. The words of this life. That, that stand out for me because I don't think there's any need for any other thing to be preached than the Word of God. Now how important is that? There are people in our life, in our century, in our town, in our community that believe that you need other things beside the Bible in which to live. Oh, they will accept the Bible as being a good word. But yet, on the other hand, they will say, you need this. I had one young man about 25, 30 years ago when I was teaching business college tell me that Christianity was just as good as Buddhism in the works of Buddha. It was just as good as, as the Hare Krishnas. It was just as good as Hinduism. That God does not make a distinction between people. Now, my mind quickly goes to the passage of Scripture where Jesus said, that no man comes under the Father but by me. And we need to realize that what the apostles preached to the disciples at that particular time and age is.